Hi, today we're talking ankle strength. All you need is a chair, a tea towel, a band and a cushion. So, take a seat. We're looking at strengthening through our ankles. So sometimes uh, we get uh, discomfort through our ankles, maybe twisted ankles and our, our ankles are weak. Think about connection with the floor. That's our only connection with the floor and able to keep us stable, upright and balanced. We need a good strong contact, even contact with the floor. Now, quite often with our feet, sometimes they turn in, which bring our knees in. This is called inversion. Sometimes our feet roll out, it's called eversion. If your toes come in, it's called super, uh, pronation, supination. So basically, we need to get good contact with the floor. So I'm sitting onto the chair, I'm going through some basic exercises just to get you started, so back to basics. So I'm sitting on the chair, I'm not using that back support, I'm going to lift one leg up off the floor. I'm keeping my hips stable and just circle. So let's get a little bit of movement through ankles. And you probably hear my ankle clicking, so you'll have to ignore that. So I'm just getting a little bit of rotation to the ankles. And then the other one. So I'll work sometimes both, sometimes singular, singularly uh, the exercises. So it's just getting that movement through the ankles, placing the feet to the floor. Now we need to look at the natural arch of the foot. So on the inside of the foot, we should have a little raise here. If we don't, we've got flat feet. We need that little raise to get that heel toe movement as we're walking. So it's developing that little arch here and not, um, not making it uh, flat to the floor. So we feet flat to the floor. So how we can develop that arch is just to claw the floor. So I do have bunions. And so this is more problematic because of the, the, the joint of my big toe. So I'm just clawing the floor. So this will allow movement of the muscle through the, the base of the, the feet just to get activated. So, and then relax there. You might find having looked that you might have a slightly higher area here. Sometimes you can tell when, um, if you're turning the feet in or out by looking at your shoes that you regularly wear. You may have wear on one side more than the other. So then you can determine whether your feet are coming in or coming out. And sometimes when you have wet feet as well, walking across the tile, you can see how much contact you have with the floor, or whether it's even flat footed, uh, you know, most of the foot touching um, the floor, or if you have raised, you have only part of the wet area on the floor. Okay, so if you can rock the toes, so you can claw, so keep the, the, the base of the foot to the floor, drawing the toes up and down, just to get a little bit of movement through the ankles. You may see the muscles working there. Okay, relax the toes there. To increase um, that movement, you can use the first, a tea towel. So a tea towel or towel, you can do this watching the TV. So I'll just do this with one foot. So it's placing the foot to the floor, and then clawing the floor. So doing that same movement as Matt, as this other foot is doing, but you're actually pulling that, that towel towards you. So with my bunion and contact with the floor, of course the towel um, on the carpet, this isn't that easy, but this is really good to activate and get your muscles around the ankles moving. So that's something that you can do, just watching the telly. Also another area to work is if you can keep the feet flat to the floor and you can lift the toe up independently and keep the rest of the toes onto the floor, drop that big toe down and then lift the opposite toes up off the floor. I'm not being able to do this particularly well, but because I'm wanting to turn my feet in because I can't do it. So there's something I would need to practice is lifting the toe up independently of your other toes, placing that toe down and then lifting the rest of the toes up. So those are exercises you can do to get um, to get your feet so activated, so you pre um, prevent the roll in and the roll out. The next exercise you can do is using the band. So it's placing the band underneath your foot. 
both feet are hip distance apart. The ankles are to the floor. The toes, the feet are pushing the band to the floor. Got a strong resistance with the band. The movement is keeping the heels to the floor, raising the foot up and then pushing down. So the band is wanting to pull the feet in. The ankles are having to work really hard and keeping the band in that set position. So it's drawing up and down to help strengthening the ankles, prevent that inward, outward turn of the feet. So the band, so I'm pushing down against the band, keeping that resistance quite strong. And again, the band's wanting to pull my feet in and pull my knees in. So it's good for your pronation. So that's turning in of the toes. So it's literally smooth and controlled, keeping the heels down to the floor, keeping that strong resistance. And it's good not to do it with pace. Just keep the alignment there. So if you start the ceiling, that they're seeing that the toes are coming in, push them out. Keep those feet hip distance apart and keep pushing down on that accelerator. So if you do this with me, so we did a few and then we had a little rest. So you're pushing down. So one way you can still work your ankles is just if you bring the feet off the floor just a little bit and just hold it there. So again, you're not lifting the foot up or down. That band's wanting to pull the feet in together and you're still creating that pressure against the band. You can lift it up again, pull the band back a little bit more. So you're creating pressure to the base of your feet against that band. So those, the muscles around your ankles are working what we call isometrically. They are working strongly to hold you in that position without any movement. So this is good for your pronation where you're wanting to come in. Also to promote uh, the muscles around the ankle, see I'm still holding that there, to promote the, um, the muscles around the ankles to stop the knee and feet coming in. So I'm going to drop the toe down, release the pressure through the band. I'm taking the band in one, one hand, taking it across to my left knee, placing the heel down to the floor and then draw the foot in. So I'm pushing pressure down on the band. The band is diagonally. So this is working just one foot to help work and strengthen the muscles around the ankles to prevent the turning in of the ankles and the knees. Just be careful that when you're doing this, you don't start doing this. You can see the line of my shorts start to come in line because I'm using turning from my hip to my knee. This is wrong. Now you can't see that line. The ankle is working here. So a good way to do is work until you can't, rest until you can. So if you're starting to feel that that knee is starting to come round, you're starting to use the wrong muscles. So it's best to have a little rest. If your foot is turning out when you walk, the same principle applies. So you're taking the heel to the floor, I switch the band to the opposite side and I'm taking that foot out. So I'm keeping the heel to the floor, I'm sitting upright, I'm creating a strong resistance through that band and I'm just feeding that foot in and out. So the pressure is pushing out again. And again, care not to start to bring in the whole leg. If you feel that that whole leg comes in, so you can see the rotation through the hip here, just stop that movement, have a little rest and do it again. So what you can do is you can think about, because I'm not I'm showing you the exercise, you could work up to sets and reps. You could do one to two sets, 10, have a short rest. So you could do a set of 10, have a short rest. Do another set of 10, have a short rest. I'm just continuing to show you the exercise. So if you do three sets of 10 to 12 reps, quite comfortably, 
started turning my knee in, you need to look at changing that exercise. So obviously you do this on both sides as well. So just to recap, as the toes come in, I'm turning the foot in. If your foot's prone to going out, turn that, take that toe out. So again, you can do both feet, keep those hips square, aim to do two to three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions, and then move on to your next exercise. So you've got the accelerator, the ones that I say here, where you're pushing both feet down, and you have the outward the supination or pronation. So we're going to leave the band now and start to use our body weight. So heels down, indication of if your toes are coming in. When you stand up, you tend to do this. You see, because the foot drops in. You need to keep the knees wide. So one exercise you could do if you're aware that you're standing, when you stand the knees drop in, is placing the heels to the floor, keep your knees in line with your toes, keep your arms across the chest, push down into heels, use a mirror and make sure that you come up with that knees coming forward and as you slowly lower down as well, so you keep your feet flat to the floor, putting the weight back to your heels and lowering down. So this will help distribute the weight through evenly the outside of the foot if you're prone to, to turn your feet in. So it's a functional activity, lifting and lowering, do it nice and slowly. So those muscles around the ankles are having to work really hard in keeping you in that stable position. And just be aware of if you've turned in the, if your pronation, just try and think about putting a little bit more pressure on the outside of the knees. I'm doing this one more time, so pushing down into the heels, coming up, making sure the knees don't come together, lengthen up. And turning around, I'll show you the side of the chair, placing the cushion on the chair, we don't need that just yet. So we've moved, mobilised, so we're going to use body weight, so alternate heels. I'll show you from behind, so feet and hip distance apart, alternate heels. So as the heels come up, push the ball of the foot down into the floor, lifting and lowering those heels. Care to watch and that you're not coming out or coming in and the knees coming in. The knees go in line with your toes, making sure that good techniques taking it nice and slow. So again, maybe rather than sets and reps, you could do approximately a minute lifting and lowering, just getting a little bit of strength through those ankles. So placing both heels to the floor and stand side on. Imagine there's a spot on the floor. Heel, toe on that spot. Make sure the knees don't come together. That heel and that toe goes down onto that same spot. So you're mobilizing through the spine, sorry, through the spine, through the ankle, so heel and toe. Okay, let's change over. So again, standing upright, heel and toe. So we do this in front of a mirror, you can see that you might be doing this and you think it's correct. You might be doing this and the knees coming in. So you need to make sure it's forward. So you're getting that movement and strength through that ankle. And it's, to do it barefoot is good. So it allows the tendons and ligaments around the feet to spread. Talking of spread, holding on to the chair, rolling the feet in and out, not the knees. Not the knees, legs are straight, rolling the feet in and out. So you have full contact with the floor. Resting the feet there, taking one foot, pointing to the floor and hold. Standing up nice and tall, get a stretch to the front of your foot. 
Will I step down, changing over to point to the floor? Both feet down, toes up, heels up, rocking back and forth. Do it nice and slow. I've got the chair for support, but progression is doing it without the chair. As you raise up, don't come too high, it's just about mobility. So just the front of the toes come up, so you hold on and press the heels up. And again, you're getting a little bit of strength and balance for the whole of the foot. So when you rest the feet down, feel more contact with the floor. Feel the feet spreading and having stronger contact with the floor. Sometimes you can close your eyes still holding on if you want to, and just imagining and feeling if there's any particular part of the foot which is touching the floor a little bit more heavy than the other. And that's something that you need to work on. If you, if you can find, if there's an area of your feet which is touching the floor a little bit more heavily, that's another day. But it may be an area that you need to work on a little bit more. Okay, so turning towards the, the chair for support. Feet hip distance apart, heel raises. So nice and slow, slowly down, slowly up. Have a little look at the feet. Ah, when you come up onto the ball of the foot, do you feel more weight on the inside of the foot or the outside of the foot? So it's extending up, not coming forward. One mistake is sort of this, so you come forward. Not really working so hard. We just need to push the weight up and down. I'll show you from behind. So it's lifting that foot up. So we're aiming for not this. Inside of the calves become tight. We're not looking at this. So the heels come out. We're straight up. So it's just again thinking of strength. Think of the alignment. So you can look down at those ankles and make sure that you're doing it smooth and controlled so that those ankles are coming up in alignment. You've got good contact with the floor. You've done those stretches. You've done the strengthening. Now you're doing it where you've got your own body weight. So lower down and turn to the side. Holding onto the chair, feet hip distance apart, little squat. Standing the foot a little bit further back. Ankles and toes in line, keep the whole foot in contact with the floor. And as you push back, make sure the knees don't come in, don't come out. So again, as I raise right up, my knees are wanting to turn in a little. So I'm just going to push out against, just be aware that those knees are coming in line with those toes. I'll show you from the side. Feet at distance apart, those knees are coming forward. So literally it's going back to basics. Knees forward, whole foot down onto the floor. So once you've got this and you feel that those knees are coming over your toes, and especially when you lengthen up, that they don't drop together. So I'm standing up tall, taking my right foot to the floor, just going to lift my left foot off the floor. So balance. Three muscles nice and tight, the chair set for support if you want to. You can let go. So you've got the movement through the ankles. I'm on carpet, so I can feel the areas around my ankle working hard to hold me in this position. So I'm going to do one side. I'm going to hold it up. You hold it up for approximately a minute. Again, nice deep breaths while you're holding this here. You can soften the knees a little, just to make it a little bit hard. You can see I had a little bit more of a wobble there. So I'm going to change over legs. The main of it being a minute is just giving you some idea. So one leg stands. So I'm holding on to the chair. I'm just lifting that foot off the floor a little bit. Progression, letting go of the chair. You can see there was more movement to the ankle, movement through the arms. So again, I'm drawing my weight up, my tummy tight. Creates a little bit more movement through my torso, so my ankles start to have to work a little bit harder. I feel a little bit of pressure through my knees, so work until you can't, rest until you can. 
So I could put that foot down. I'm going to bend my knee to create a little bit more pressure through the knees. And again, you can see a little bit more sort of wobble through the legs. So one leg stance. So that it will get even workload through the weaker and the stronger parts of your ankles. They're working there to help you stable. Okay, so dropping the foot down to the floor. Next exercise and the last exercise today is where the cushion comes in. So these types of exercises you could do daily, just as a bit of a, just of a start to the day. Keep your ankles away from maybe you've done a lot of walking. So I'm just using the, the cushion to stand on. So now I've add, added more movement so you can see, I'll show you from the front. So I'm in the center of the cushion. My balance is having to work a lot harder. It's got more of an unstable base. So the muscles around the, the um, ankle is working a lot harder. So again, progression, a lot of progression, work the opposite side as well. So I'll try one side more than the other. So again, I'm just giving you ideas to do. You can hold this as long as you want to. We can add on, I'll do another session where we can add on here for one more exercise. So I'm going to hold on to the chair. I'm going to stand to the top, the corner of the, of the cushion. And draw the leg across in front. Show you from the side. To the top area of the cushion. I'm going to come back a little bit. I'm just taking the leg across the centre. So it's adding a little bit more challenge through my ankles. This one is wanting to move from side to side. I'm changing, changing this also, I'm taking the leg away. So my foot's wanting to roll out on the outside of my foot to help stabilize me. Because this will help your pronation and supination. So rolling in, pronation, out. So again, I'll show you on the opposite side. I'm standing on my opposite leg now, taking my leg across the center, my straight leg, I'm going to let go. Again, the force is more on the outside of this foot. So that's the leg coming across in the center. Or we don't need to change, it's just some going here. You can probably see more movement going through my left leg. It really isn't such a strong leg. And that's why I'm using the chair to hold on. Just taking the kick. Smoothly out to the side, just adding instability. Don't make that leg movement choppy, smooth out to the side and in. Keep breathing as you do so. So, again, you can work on 10, sorry, two to three sets of 10 to four, um, 12 reps, and then move on to that next exercise. The simple movements you can do to help strengthen through your ankles, using a chair, a cushion, a tea towel. It doesn't take long. It's good to keep those feet strong, those ankles strong for falls prevention. It helps if you've got good contact with the floor also, it may, if it may help strengthen your knees and your hips as well. So they all work together in the chain. I hope that helped and that's just back to basics with the ankles. There's more to come. Take care. Bye.